Okay, friends, welcome back to the channel. Okay, let's make another video. Um, what do I want to say? <sighs> this video is for anybody <laughs> who was stuck in the undertow of this Libra full moon. That's myself included. And I know a bunch of y'all too. And then there's like a whole chunk of people who are just like, full moon? I had no idea. Um, well, if you don't notice this effects, consider yourself lucky. The rest of us, let's get some advice. <laughs> how to, um, how to deal with maybe the energies that are happening. We'll definitely look at the energies happening this week based on the, the movement of the astral bodies, right? Because I have my notes. I mean, one of the biggest things that's happening this week is the sun is finally moving into Taurus. Good old, reliable, steady, hearted, steady hearted, steady paced Taurus. Taurus is all about our values. So, you know, this is a time to dip into and reconnect with the things that we care about. Um, the moon is moving into Pluto as well this week. You know, so for me, Pluto is, um, I believe the eighth house of, of transformation and, and change and, and death. And, you know, it's Scorpio ruled by Scorpio. And so when the moon connects, the moon being all about our emotions connects to Pluto. I sort of think that this is a chance to really deeply feel how your emotions are changing or what is being revealed through your emotions. Um, so that's happening on Earth Day on the 22nd. What is being revealed, right? Like I'm thinking like I don't know if secrets is the right word for it, but it does feel like that. It feels sort of, I love the Polish word for secret, tajemnica, tajemnica. Just the, the context of the word in its feeling feels more like ancient than just the word secret, which sort of has a connotation of something being withheld. But what, but the kind of secrets I feel about this week are more of the ancient wisdom kind. So take that how that resonates. Whatever it makes you think about. Um, what else do we have happening this week? Let's see. Oh, and then the moon in Saturn, moon moving across Saturn as well. You know, Saturn's all about structure. It is a, it is a planet of restriction, right? And that's Capricorn energy. Um, so it's ambitious right we might have a f the feeling of wanting to or needing to push past any feelings of restrictions at this time to that end you know i might say something like keep your ego in check right like how you're going about doing things how you're processing your own change if it's been a painful libra moon then you know that there's been a lot of transformation happening under the surface so I feel like what's being asked now is to bring that outwards. Let it, let the cocoon be transformed and like grow into this next thing because growing is um, not always comfortable. So if you've been feeling uncomfortable, that's why. Let's see what the story in the cards is today. That's all I got um, in terms of the astrological updates. I just want to get a, a reading from the cards just to see what else it might have to say. Is there anything else I wanted to say? I don't know. I got in my whites today to make sure that I meditate. I'm wearing my favorite pink robe so that I can feel relaxed. I've been having a lot of anxiety, mm. which it's hard to explain or know exactly where it comes from sometimes. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. And all you need is time. Time can, time to get quiet, to be still, to be alone, to be in your own energy, to connect to your higher self. So I'd like to channel only good messages today for anybody who has also been struggling 
in the last week or weekend. <laughs> Let me throw a lifeline out to the Libra full moon sufferers. The Libra full moon, if you remember, was about healing partnerships. It also happened in the fourth house. The fourth house of origins, family, partnerships, yada yada. Well, not necessarily partnerships, but like relationships. Home sector stuff. And Libra is about partnerships. So there was, um, if you participated in, in the full moon, and I know I don't think, I don't think I mentioned this in the past video, but it, it, it's a powerful time to journal about people you want to forgive, especially in your family or past relationships or current relationships. And that which has been left unaccounted for probably came to the surface, right? And it will continue to do so. So, because it's just a winding path here. <sighs> mutable moon, nothing is yet set in stone. Yeah, mutable moon. I got this last time I did a reading. South note, don't let your past hold you back. Okay, so I feel like a lot of people are existing, what is he going to focus? Existing in your comfort zone. Why... Why are you going back there? <laughs> full moon Libra, which we just had. We just had the full moon in Libra. A win-win outcome is forecast, is what it says. But what it really means is that when we balance our own needs with the needs and desires of other people, we can strike a balance. There's a negotiation that happens. A very powerful message that's been coming out recently also has been to not let other people's opinions dictate your choices. It's okay to disagree and for people to have different viewpoints, but it is, is it a way that has conditioned you to make certain choices? For example, like don't, don't let your past hold you back. I feel like there's some, there's some sort of connection here to like a past pattern that's showing up. Um, that maybe feels comfortable or automatic or like I said preconditioned about your past that is not going to serve you anymore so check in with yourself check in with your body and see how you feel see how you really feel and stop acting like you did before because you're not a robot you can't you, you're we're, our minds are programmable though so how you, um, you know, your diet, your mindfulness diet matters. I like that it says nothing is yet set in stone. You know, there's certainly a lot of opportunity still. So if, if you're sitting there thinking about possibly that something has been, um, like you missed an opportunity or something, I feel like this is wanting to be reassuring that there is no such thing because that which is meant for you will not elude you. Nothing is yet set in stone and you get to um, decide your um, what do I want to say? You always get to decide sort of what what direction to go in. Just because South Node is showing up and this like past thing is showing up, I feel like it's because it's connected to the full moon in Libra. It's showing you things that need to be healed before you can move forward. So like any karmic connections, any uh, un unbalanced relationships. Maybe you're giving too much to yourself and not to others or the vice versa. You're giving too much to others and not to yourself. So however that's manifesting for you, that's what's showing up and I think you should do that in in that period of time you might have missed some opportunity it, this is the story that i'm getting however that's not true it's just things can be delayed until other things are addressed so this is about doing the work and trusting in the universe that the things that you want will come anyway i'm just going to read mutable moon because i just want to know which signs are affected the mutable signs are Gemini, Sag, Virgo, Pisces. When you, um, when the mutable moon shows up, we know that there's going to be more flexibility within a situation. 
Yep. There's an opportunity to keep visualizing and affirming what you want as there's as there is still room for change. So think about what you want and enjoy the daydream. It's like the gates to the past are open. Are you going to walk through that door? How do you really feel about this past thing? I mean, the past is showing up because it wants to be released. If you've been obsessing about something, it needs to be released. There's the ego coming in. Saying, what are you, what are you obsessing over? The challenge is to make some changes here, honestly. Take a good, honest look at what's going on in your life. All right, what are the energies for the week? We're going to keep reading the tarot with the Northern Animal tarot deck. It's been slow going with breaking these in, but that's okay. Okay. What do we need to know today, this week, whenever you watch this, or whoever? You know, because we are moving into Taurus, like I said, it's saying sort of like hold true to your values. Don't let don't let your um, the things that you want to stand for believe in. That's who you are. Um, be swayed or deterred by other people's opinions here, or by your own opinions. Like other people could be you from the past in this situation. Just because past you would have handled it this way, there's a chance here to make a different choice. Every day there's just choices. Okay. Well, there's Capricorn showing up, the two of, um, two of Pentacles. So this is just confirming for me that um, this is about overcoming something that doesn't feel sustainable. Something feels like it's been a lot. King of Swords, there you go, standing in your power, mm -hmm. knowing knowing the truth. Uh, the Hermit, there's Virgo, shining your light. Page of Wands, okay. We're we're headed towards adventure, so that's nice. Uh, we have the Queen of Cups, Knight of Pentacles. Wow, look at all of these people in this reading. There's a lot of people here. Um, okay, then we have Autumn, Sasquatch. This deck has some special cards. The Seven of Wands and the Nine of Wands. I feel like this is, again, if, when, let's talk about the releasing part here because the full moon was, is an, any full moon is an important time to release things that we need to frustration, anger, disagreements. Um, it's a time of forgiveness. And I feel like what's being asked of you right now um, is again, to go go inward and find your light again. There, there has to be some sort of routine to it. So I don't know if you're like pulling out your calendar and scheduling time, for example, to meditate or scheduling time to um, do something else that you care about doesn't have to be meditate for me that's how I'm relating to it is like how do I make time for the things um, that matter to me while things are getting busier right so it's just about taking time out for self-care and I, I I guess I said meditate because um, the hermit Virgo is all about sort of like alternative um, it, it's, it's the sign of health but it's also like alternative medicine so uh, meditation or any sort of like holistic sort of energy work healing possibly is something that's here and I'm getting the message right now that it's like about letting something go energetically so this might not be tied to a particular person in your life um, or a tangible situation like leaving a toxic work environment for example but I feel like it's more it's more of the energetic kind 
because what I'm I'm also seeing here is that you're 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 in a bit of a defensive position. So a defensive position is not necessarily the best place to manifest from, and by manifest I mean to like make plans and be thinking about what you want to bring into your life. I feel like before you do that, you have to address your methodology, how your daily activities and how your own your connection to yourself how you talk to yourself is going to impact what you're about to bring in. Because again, if you're in a place of um, letting your emotions get out of control, for example, um, like I'm seeing here that like you know better, but your emotions are sort of, you, you want to um, entertain the idea of an emotion. The idea of the emotion that you're having might be a good one, but is it? What is actually healthy is sort of the message I'm getting here. And I think that you you are ready for this adventure, right? The Page of Wands, it's about being an explorer and wanting to move past whatever this pattern is. I just between those things before that can happen i'm seeing that there there's a drawing in of energy that needs to happen right the hermit and we have the autumn card autumn is about you know the leaves falling so we're shedding weight but we're also harvesting we're harvesting all the good parts um this is this reading speaks to me very largely of like an energetic clearing so let's get a few more message well ghost on the bottom yeah the ghost a little ghosty. The ghost is about the stories we tell ourselves to remain comfortably scared. That's interesting. You know, uh, here's another thought for you. Food for thought. Is this past pattern showing up? And you're saying to yourself, I need to deal with this because for me it feels unresolved. Like, why are you juggling? Again, if you have things to do, right? Like dreams to pursue, awesome things to, to do in your life to manifest. Why aren't you not just focusing on those things? What is it that's telling you that you have to deal with, give your energy to this other thing, this past thing? You can choose to not participate at any time. I know it's hard because the ego is involved here this week. The ego is here. It's saying, I have thoughts. I still hurt from this thing. I still, I'm triggered. But how are you gonna deal with it? Again, you're in a defensive position here. And this, the South Node card says, don't let your past hold you back. So this often happens when, when I read cards, I feel like a big takeaway, like an arch, is just a reorienting. There's the quarter game. From like the very first video I've ever made, I feel like the quarter game is always here. The idea that things are always changing. The moment to strike is when you put the quarter in. And you know, where are you? You only have so many quarters. So don't be wasting them on areas that you know you're not going to get a payout. Um, and it's not always about getting like a huge payout or like some, you know, some, I'm not trying to say that something's only worth doing if you get something out of it. But just consider for a second what your truth is about where your emotional investment is going, even subconsciously. Where is it going? Because if it's going to a past pattern or something's showing up for you or just even internally something is wanting your attention, maybe it's just there to show you how much you've grown. You don't have to give it any energy. Just say, thank you so much for showing me how much I've changed. Keep your opinions to yourself, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Does this help? Um, okay, let's just get a few last cards 
any messages from the universe for the collective how do we manage this week's energy any advice for the week Here we go. The Ten of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Five of Cups. Yeah. Look, this can still be salvaged. If, if you did give in to this past energy, this, if you find yourself right now falling into a pattern that makes you feel you're like you're on the defensive or needing to sort of redeem yourself, Honestly, like, it's a heavy energy because it's kind of disappointing. I don't know who, who feels disappointed right now. But if you look at the, these cards, you know, this, this Five of Cups, they're mostly just looking at the Fallen Cups there. So it reveals something about a mind state or like an emotional state right now. Um, I do want to say that the Seven of Swords then is sort of suggesting that we find an... We, he's sort of sneaking out whoops where is he he's sneaking out with the swords i mean it 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 is a card of deception but at the same time you know it for me i'm understanding that it's like tricking yourself out of a negative pattern of thinking you need to get out from behind this thing okay and the two cups that are still standing there that is the indicator that this thing can be salvaged this there, there's all you have to do is turn around and see the brighter side of things, see the positive things, because your legacy, your family, that this is your family, your kinship, the things that are, the things that are on your path, basically that is your, I don't, without sounding too like woo woo, because I don't mean destiny, but I want to say the word destiny, like the things that you're destined for, the places you are ultimately going, I guess is what I mean, require you to be strategic. That's why the King of Swords is here. King of Swords is here. You're, you you sort of understand you don't need any validation for what your truth is and what you understand. How you communicate has reached an, a, a high level. But then you have your emotions here and then Sasquatch. So I feel like there's, there's a bit of a battle between the head and the heart right now. So um, how are you using your feelings this is the advice. How are you using your feelings, acknowledging your feelings, in order to make moves, strategic moves toward your future? I say this all the time, but our feelings are just data points. If you feel a certain way about something, it's telling, it's revealing something about yourself, and usually very little about the thing you have feelings about. I mean, that's that's true too, but. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Um, and I'll see you next week.